Okay, guys, let's go through some review over factoring. And factoring when we have some number out in front of our x squared, x our y squared, wherever the value is, it's squared out there. So first thing we're going to do is to start with the case. So it has two plus signs, so it's case one. That means when I go to factor it, I know that if it's case one, these both have to be plus signs. One of the other things that we talked about was that we really need to get rid of this number. If we know how to solve without that number in the front, we can put it back on when we get done. So when we start, we're going to take these two and multiply them. So that means 3 times 2 is going to be 6. And then I'm going to bring the rest of it down. Okay, so now when I go to look at this, I know if it's case 1, I have to have a sum of 7. And this is the number I'm going to go off on the side and I'm going to have to factor. So 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. Since I want to have a sum of 6, I'm going to choose 1 and 6. So they're going to go in here. In the front, they're both going to be x's. Now, at the very beginning, I multiplied by that 3 that was there. So in order to solve this problem, I'm going to have to go back through and now divide by 3 to get rid of it. And when I divide, I only divide the last factor. Now, if I were to put these in my calculator, I want to see if either one of these are going to reduce. So on the first one, there's no reducing that happens. It stays as one-third. On the second one, 6 divided by 3 is going to be 2. Okay, now our deal is if there is any fraction left, that number is going to get pulled in front. So it's going to be 3x plus 1, and then x plus 2. And that's going to be my final answer. Now, if I'm not sure if that's my answer or not, I should be able to take this and use either FOIL or the shortcut method to multiply it back together. And I should be able to get this back out of it if I've done it correctly. Okay, let's try the next one. So here is our next one. So first of all, I know it's minus and plus. So I know it's case two. And to start, I'm going to multiply by that eight to get rid of it. So it's going to be x squared minus nine x plus eight. Now if it's case two, I'm going to have to have a sum of nine and then I'm going to have to go off on the side and I'm going to have to factor 8. So 1 and 8 and 2 and 4. Okay, so if it's case 2, these both have to be minus signs there. And out of those list of factors, the only one that will give me a sum is 1 and 8. Because these both have multiplication signs here, it doesn't matter where they go. So 1 and 8 are going to go in there. The only other piece that I have to deal with is that at the very beginning, I multiplied by 8. So to get rid of that, I'm going to have to divide both these factors by 8. So the good news is this last one oops, ends up being 1. When I put 1 over 8 into my calculator, it doesn't reduce, so it stays there. And then remember, if there's stuff left in the bottom, once you go through and reduce, I'm going to move it in the front. So it's going to be 8x minus 1 and x minus 1. And that's going to be my final answer. Okay, let's go to the next one. I want to do a case 3 and 4. So plus and then minus is case 3. And I'm going to start by multiplying that 9 to get rid of it. So it's going to be y squared 
plus 6y, and then 9 times 8 is 72. So now if it's case 3, I know I'm going to have to have a difference of positive 6, and this is the number that I'm going to factor. So 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, 4 and 18, 6 and 7, oops, 6 and 12, there we go, and 8 and 9. So I want a difference of 6. So this pair right here is my difference of 6. I want that 6 difference to be positive, so the bigger number, which is 12, is going to get the plus sign, and 6 is going to get the minus sign. So if I go to set this up, because it's case 3, 1 is plus and 1 is minus. Since this was the negative that went with the 6 down here, that's going to go with the minus sign. Plus 12 is going to go here. Now, at the very beginning, I multiplied by 9 up here to get rid of it. So now I'm going to divide by 9 on both these pieces. Now, if I put them in my calculator to reduce, 12 over 9 is going to become 4 over 3. And 6 over 9 is going to become 2 over 3. Now remember, if we have stuff left in the bottom of the fractions, these are going to go out in front. So 3y plus 4 and 3y minus 2. Okay, one more, guys. Let's take a look at this one. Minus minus is case 4. So now by the time we're done, we've done all of the cases. To get rid of this 2, all right, we're going to multiply them together. So n squared minus 3n. And then 2 times 14 is 28. But as case 4, I'm going to need a difference of negative 1, and I'm going to factor 28. So 1 and 28, 2 and 14, and 4 and 7. Now there's a pair that has a difference of 3. Since that 3 is negative, I'm going to make 7, which is the bigger number, negative. And then 4 is going to get the plus sign, which helps because I know in case 4, one of those is going to have plus and one of them is going to have to be minus. So the plus is going to go with the 4, and the 7 is going to go with the minus. Now, because I multiplied by 2 early on to do this, I'm going to divide by 2 now, just the factor part. So in this first one, 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that one is done. There's nothing else I can do to it. In the second one, if I were to put that in my calculator, 7 over 2 does not reduce. But remember, if we're left with this, this part's going to go out in front. So n plus 2 for the first parentheses, and then 2n minus 7. Okay, practice some more with your foldable from Friday, and this will be what you're seeing on Plickers tomorrow.